In today's episode of Space Base News, the Starship SN8 is ready to resume its testing as new road closures were just announced. What exactly caused this almost catastrophic failure and what SpaceX been doing to fix the issue? And of course, we have to go over the amazing SpaceX Crew 1 launch. We have a lot of really exciting SpaceX stuff to cover, so let's jump straight in. I'm Radim and welcome back to the Space Base News. The Starship SN8 almost exploded after its last sparky static fire test, but thanks the stars it didn't. And SpaceX is working really hard to resume its testing. But what exactly was the issue? Let's find out. About a week ago, it seemed we were almost there, just a couple of static fires away from the 15 km flight. Everything was on track and on November 10th, as expected, serial number 8 blazed up again, but for the first time ever, using the no scone header tanks. It was a single Raptor firing and what an explosive show. We had some unexpected fireworks, sparks shooting in every angle and I think the look on everyday astronaut's face says it all. There was some discussion in the space community of what kind of material caused this shiny burst of debris and whether it could do some damage under the skirt of the starship. But though fireworks wasn't desirable, the test itself seemed successful in the end. Then on November 13, there was another day and another static fire test. This time the plan was to test two engines simultaneously and everything was looking good and they did it again. Raptor sent some serious fireballs and they clashed hardly with the concrete pad underneath and sparks were flying all over Boca Chica's side once more. Exciting show and hopefully success so… but… Uh oh, what's that? That doesn't look nominal. One of the raptors was leaking something which looked like a molten lava, that was odd for sure. If you watched the NASA spaceflight livestream, it was quite a drama as nobody was sure what exactly was happening. Nothing good for sure. Then Elon Musk clarified that the situation is uh, actually even worse than many thought. He tweeted that SpaceX lost serial number 8's pneumatics, reason was unknown at the time, and that the pressure inside the liquid oxygen header tank is rising. Pneumatics in this case is a system similar to hydraulics, but using pressurized gas instead of a fluid. In Starship, this system is used for opening and closing valves, so in fact we were possibly watching a ticking time bomb. The last hope to save the Starship SN8 was a very simple device called Burst Disk, which is a single-use mechanical valve, sort of seal which is supposed to break once the pressure rises above certain level. The cryogenic propellant inside the header tank was slowly warming up, boiling like a water in pressure cooker and we had a pretty good idea what may come next as we already seen it before. But thankfully the burst disk popped up soon after and relieved the pressure of both the Starship SN8 and also for all the fans watching the stream. If you wanna dive deeper into this, Scott Manley did a great video on the topic, the link is in the description. Now what exactly caused this unfortunate situation? Why we almost seen another Starship undergo rapid unscheduled disassembly? Well at first we didn't know. Elon tweeted that maybe it could be melted engine preburner or fuel hot gas manifold. Whatever it was, it caused pneumatic loss and that SpaceX needs to design out that problem. And that caused some concerns among Starship followers because Elon was pointing out that it was all possibly Raptor's fault, which in worst case scenario means there could be a flaw in the design of the engine. And that's not really what we wanna hear. Raptor is a crucial part of the Starship system and any major redesign will also mean major delays for the future testing schedule. And then finally on November 18th, Elon tweeted about the Raptor issue yet again, putting the rest all our concerns. It turns out, as many of us hoped, it wasn't Raptor's fault after all, but rather shattered pieces of marchite covering the concrete, shooting at extreme speeds right into engine bay, which severed avionics cable causing bad shutdown of Raptor. And those were frankly really really great news, signaling that no major design changes are needed for both the Raptor or the Starship SN8, but still, the team at Boca Chica needs to carry out some minor repairs and they'll also have to try to figure out how to prevent the same situation from happening again. About a week ago, we thought we were days away from Starship serial number 8 going airborne, leaving the pad and hopefully not destroying it in the case of failed landing. Now the funny thing is that quite the opposite happened and the launch pad almost destroyed the Starship. 
So now you might say the simple clear-cut solution will be a flame diverter. Well, almost any large orbital rocket ever flown so far had some sort of flame diverter system and it seems so much common sense to have one that SpaceX might look they are completely out of their minds not using one for the Starship. But there is one major difference between classic expendable rocket and the Starship because Starship has to not only lift off the launch pad but it also needs to land and it doesn't matter if we talking about landing on Earth or in the future on Mars. It has to be able to touch down safely on any flat surface while its Raptors firing its exhaust stream on the ground underneath at extreme velocities. So Starship has to be able to do that and also of course not to destroy itself in the process. And as it turned out after the last static fire, it might not be a trivial problem after all. But SpaceX has to figure it out nevertheless. So building a flame diverter at Boca Chica will be only a temporary solution that might not be worth the effort, resources and most importantly significant delays for the testing schedule. According to Elon Musk's tweet, SpaceX decided instead to add additional layers of protection to the current design of the Starship prototypes. They've been moving avionics cables into steel pipe shields and they also add water-cooled steel pipes to the pad. This quick fix will hopefully be enough for now to allow SpaceX team resume the SN8 testing campaign very soon. And in case you were wondering about the status of the Raptor engines that were mounted on the Starship during the failed test, two of them are completely fine. However, the one we all seen violently bleeding out right on the launch pad, not so much. The Raptor in question has serial number 32 and it's unlikely there is much SpaceX can do to fix it. Although Elon jokingly tweeted, it's just a scratch, we can buff it out. But in reality, of course, a center D2 was removed and replaced with Raptor serial number 42 on November 16th. So let's hope we're asking the right question here and the number 42 is the right answer for Starship problems. Next up, SpaceX had to fix the aftermath of the burst disk popping out of the nose cone section and this repair has already been done as well. And about the launch pad, thanks to RGB we can see how that looks and apart of some smoky areas it appears to be in really good shape. So SN8's got all three engines back and it seems it's ready to roll. Ok, but do we have any idea when exactly we gonna see Starship SN8 breathing fire once again? Actually, not only that, but we also have new possible launch dates. That's right, new road closure dates were finally just announced, so now we have pretty good idea what's next for the serial number 8. Two rounds of road closure windows were announced. The first one, the primary date is on Monday, November 23rd from 9am to 9pm with two backup dates on Tuesday and Wednesday, November 24th and 25th, both between 8am and 5pm. For those three days there was no reason officially listed, but I think it's safe to say that those days are reserved for more static fire tests. But then we have another primary date week later on Monday November 30th from 7 am till 6 pm with backup dates on Tuesday and Wednesday December 1st and 2nd, both between 8 am and 5 pm. And this time we have a public notice posted where the reason is no other than SN8 15 kilometer flight once again. So what do you think? Is it finally happening? Let me know down in the comments below. Personally, I can't say I'm not excited. It was a rough week at Boca Chica, but it appears there is a little doubt we are back on track now. The Starship development is an exciting venture. We have a lot of ups, but there are also plenty of nerve-wracking moments like the last static fire test. But the universe was kind to us this time and thanks to super fast SpaceX team quickly resolving the issue, we can again look forward to the 15 km flight sometime in early or mid-December. SpaceX Crew-1 successfully launched and docked with the ISS and this mission had some really exciting and special moments. Let's go over them. Four lucky astronauts chosen for the mission, the Commander Mike Hopkins, Pilot Victor Glover and Mission Specialist Shannon Walker and Soichi Noguchi arrived at the Pad 39A roughly three hours prior to the liftoff. They were followed by so-called SpaceX ninjas, entered the elevators and slowly but surely made their way inside the Crew Dragon spacecraft with call sign resilience. There was a minor issue when sealing the hatch, but it got resolved very quickly. The crew access arm was then 
retracted and fueling began at T-35 minutes. And at that point, astronauts would start to feel the rocket coming alive, huffing and puffing, hearing variety of sounds and cracks as the propellant is loading inside the tanks underneath them. It's just amazing, really. Sounds of the dragon. And then finally, the moment we were all waiting for. Shortly after the launch, SpaceX published those amazing pictures showing the Falcon 9 spreading the steam and smoke all over the legendary pad 39A. Those are some spectacular photos, we can see the booster performing quite a show here, majestically soaring towards the night Florida sky with four space hitchhikers inside at the beginning of their journey. It was a night launch and many people around the area also captured some really stunning videos from different angles showing the glowing fire trail behind the booster. Especially this shot from cosmic perspective is really mind-blowing, I could watch that on repeat over and over. Go to their YouTube channel and subscribe, they do some amazing work and they definitely deserve some support. Shortly after the astronauts got into orbit, the question of what kind of zero-g indicator they've chosen was finally answered and the new member joining the crew was no other than Baby Yoda himself. Great choice crew 1. Then Mike Hopkins got hold on the mic and gave us a tour of the Crew Dragon Resilience. Okay everyone, uh, good morning. Currently we're going to give you just a little bit of a tour of our home. If you take a quick look here, you can see we've got three primary displays, that touch screen displays that we used. Actually uh, quite nice, the touch, the touch screens that we have here for controlling uh, resilience. We also have some backup uh, controls here, buttons, um, so that if anything should happen to these displays, we still have some of the critical functionality that we can we can accomplish so now I'm gonna pass you off to Ike and the tour concluded in a touching moment for the newbie astronaut Victor Glover we're gonna close out this little tour dragon resilience here with something uh, very very special actually when you first are selected as an astronaut uh, you come in for your basic training you go through about two years of training to become an astronaut and then once that is complete and you graduate we give the, each uh, each each candidate now becomes an astronaut, but they're an unflown astronaut, and they get a silver pin. But once you've passed that 100 kilometer mark, you then get a gold pin. And we have one member of our crew who uh, does not have the appropriate uh, accoutrement for his <laughs> uniform, and so it's worth it to be able to give Victor Glover his gold astronaut pin for oh, passing. Hundred kilometers. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Crew one. Crew one. While roaming the Earth's orbit, crew members were enjoying spectacular view, and they've also shared some of that with us. The view from windows such as this, that's a different kind of travel class. This is another really nice photo taken by Soichi capturing Mike, Victor and Shannon unpacking some stuff. And I just can't help myself to wonder where is the toilet there? Hmm. And then resilience was getting closer and closer to the ISS. Here on this picture we can see the Dragon was finally spotted by cameras on the space station being about 200 kilometers away from its future parking spot. In fact, depending on your location and time of course, you could spot the spacecraft chasing the ISS yourself as you can see here on video posted by Deep Sky Dude. Amazing shot. Resilience was continuing on its way to the space station, the next steps were to pass through series of waypoints where at each one of those go or no go decisions has to be made before allowing the spaceship to proceed further. Thankfully everything worked out just great. Four space passengers were enjoying smooth ride and Dragon Resilience docked autonomously with ISS Harmony module on Monday night at 11 pm Eastern Time. It was roughly 27 hours after its launch. Well, thank you, Kathy. Uh, you know, we just want to say uh, thank you to everybody SpaceX, NASA, 
It was an amazing ride. I, I can't tell you uh, how excited we were when uh, that rocket lifted off the pad and, and then the last 27, and 27 hours have, has gone really smooth, actually. I don't want to talk for too long here about how important milestone this is, as I made a special video about it prior to the launch. So go and watch that if you want, the link is in the description. But in short, SpaceX has now become the world's first commercial provider of human spaceflight. Or as I like to say, referring to airliners, SpaceX is now the world's first space liner. And no, that really has nothing to do with Boeing Starliner. With Crew Dragon spacecraft being certified and operational, NASA has now option to book as many flights they want. But SpaceX is not stopping there. Tom Cruise already booked a space flight ticket for October next year to shoot some movie scenes in space and the truth is that now you can book a seat and go to space too. Well, if you have spare 55 million dollars in your bank account, then you can go. Yeah, pretty difficult requirement to meet, to be honest, but hey, that's fine. We just skimming the surface here, but we finally did the first step. Important one for sure. You can even see some similarity here with the original Tesla strategy. The target customer for the first Tesla Roadster wasn't somebody like you and me, but somebody like Leonardo DiCaprio. And even though he's rich, he allegedly begged Elon Musk to get him one for free nevertheless. According to Elon Musk's biography by Ashley Vance. So there you have it. And nowadays the Tesla Model 3, while still not amongst the cheapest option on the market, it's definitely affordable if you really really want it. And I believe we will see something similar but in more extreme way to happen with the cost of human spaceflight. If Starship will be flying humans in let's say 10 years, and now I'm intentionally saying the worst case scenario, then it will take some time for the market prices to adjust. But in let's say 20 years from now, we could get to the point where there could be a cheaper option of some classic old school holiday, flying economy to some nice maybe exotic destination, but here on earth. Or you could have the alternative if you want to, you could pay something close to the cost of the first class ticket nowadays, but instead fly into space for a week long vacation in the low earth orbit. And I think that's not just feasible, but 20 years may be even conservative guesstimate. Well, I definitely wish I'm wrong now and we'll get there even sooner. But no matter how long it will take, this kind of future is just inevitable and we can enjoy looking forward to it, embracing each one of those exciting milestones that are happening now, that are paving the way for the space to become much more more accessible than is now. Okay, that's all I have for today's episode. If you like the content I do, please subscribe, hit the like button and also click on the notification bell so you'll get notified each time I'll drop a new episode. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>